Yeah, thanks, Mariana. And let me start by thanking the organizers for the opportunity to present this talk, uh, which was based on uh, some recent work and on some work in, uh, in progress with uh, Paolo Di Vecchia, Rodolfo Russo, and Gabriele Veneziano. So the topic is going to be the iconal exponentiation in the soft region at low and at high energy. And uh, let me begin by reviewing some of the main motivations underlying this work and that have to do with the program of uh, learning about classical gravitational observables in the post-Minkowskian expansion uh, by extracting it from, um, by extracting information from quantum scattering ambit. So uh, in the context of this uh, program, the state of the art as far as the scattering of spinless black holes is concerned is the uh, derivation of the third post-Minkowskian conservative Hamiltonian, uh, which was given to completion essentially by now a couple of years ago by uh, three Burton and collaborators in, uh, in these two outstanding papers. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, with a puzzle that is linked to this Hamiltonian. So um, if one computes the deflection angle from, uh, from this effective Hamiltonian and, uh, and looks at the high energy behavior. So if one looks at the scattering of two objects with masses M1 and M2, and looks at center of mass energies much larger than that, one finds that the deflection angle scales essentially as S cubed times log S. And uh, on the other hand, uh, an earlier result that was derived in the late 80s by Mati Chavaroni and Veneziano for massless scattering showed that the third post-Minkowskian deflection angle in that context was just exhibiting a power of S cubed, namely uh, with no logarithmic enhancement. And so the puzzle was that the high energy regime of massive scattering seemed to, be, seemed to not be smoothly connected to the corresponding massless regime. And uh, the main point I would like to address in this talk is, uh, uh, is to point to a resolution of this, of this tension and uh, this essentially will have to do with this keyword here, conservative. So uh, I would like to divide the material in, in two parts. And the first part, uh, I would like to review uh, the underlying concept behind the iconal exponentiation, which uh, is a technique that allows us to retrieve classical information from scattering amplitude. And, uh, and this will lead us to uh, to discuss the classical limit of the amplitude and how we can eventually extract information about classical observables such as the uh, scattering angle. And in the second half, I will uh, present some results that concern mainly n equal eight supergravity. So we will consider the scattering of massive states in the maximal symmetric, supersymmetric theory at generic energies. And in particular, we will discuss the full iconal exponentiation in the so-called soft region and uh, at a technical level, we will touch upon uh, a technique that has already been mentioned in the past few days of differential equations and their boundary conditions in particular. And then we will discuss some physical properties of the iconal and the scattering angle, both at high and at low energies. So let me start by describing a bit better uh, the system that we have in mind. We are interested in the scattering of uh, two massive objects, masses M1 and M2, and we are interested in a regime in which gravitational interactions can be regarded as weak, namely when the typical separation, which is sized, for instance, by the impact parameter, is much larger than the typical sizes of the bodies or the typical scales of gravitational interaction, in this case, the Schwarzschild radii. And, uh, um, and, and this is what characterizes for us the so-called post minkowskian regime. And uh, furthermore, we want to uh, look at the case where uh, quantum effects are completely negligible, and this means that uh, quantum wavelengths associated to these bodies, such as the Compton wavelength, for instance, should be much smaller than both of the previous two scales. And um, the main observables that we will be interested in will be the total momentum transfer in this scattering process, which is, uh, which is linked to, uh, to the deflection angle that I will denote by chi. So um, the fundamental object from which we want to extract uh, information is the elastic 2 to 2 amplitude for spinless objects, which we can regard in momentum space as a function of uh, the square of the center of mass energy S and this uh, small Q, the perturbative momentum transfer. And we can look, uh, in fact, the only way we have access to the calculation of the amplitude is the perturbative expansion in powers uh, 
of the Newton. So we have we have a three-level part, one loop part, and a two-level uh, contribution. Now, the first input that comes to us from uh, the econal method is that we should not look at this amplitude in momentum space, but rather perform a Fourier transform and move to impact parameter space. Uh, so regarding the amplitude as a function of the center of mass energy and uh, the relative position, if you will, in the plane transverse to the incoming uh, direction. And, uh, uh, and since we are interested in, in large impact parameters, as we, uh, we saw in the previous slide, this translates in Fourier transform uh, to the fact that we will be interested in the uh, behavior of the amplitude for small uh, momentum transfers, Q, the so-called near forward limit. So let us uh, do just that. Let us look at the small Q expansion of the amplitude, for instance, which is here on the left-hand side of the slide. And uh, what one finds in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this limit is the following feature, which may at first look puzzling for, uh, from um, a purely textbook approach, but by now it's become more and more familiar to people dealing with the classical limits of amplitude, namely uh, in, the, in the small Q limit, not only classical terms appear at level, but in fact, uh, they also appear at loop levels and uh, loop levels not only contain quantum contributions, but also superclassical and doubly superclassical contribution, namely objects that would scale if we were to reinstate powers of h bar, not only as one over h bar, but also one over h bar squared and h bar cubed. So essentially, uh, the perturbative expansion uh, and, and uh, enforcing the classical limit on the perturbative expansion of the amplitude is uh, a mess. So, but, but uh, at this point, the iconal comes to the rescue, and uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the amplitude in this classical limit resums if written in impact parameter space. And this means that the plethora of singular terms we were dealing with in the previous slide was just due to the fact that uh, this exponential here had been uh, written uh, poorly. Uh, in, in more precisely, this means that this exponential delta is, a, is a, a, a conal phase. Small delta is, in fact, a large quantity in the classical limit, and that it should be more properly regarded as uh, a rapidly oscillating phase and not a sum of large contributions. At the practical level, this entails a number of identifications that allow us to um, uh, retrieve this uh, iconal phase big delta and this iconal remember uh, big delta from, uh, from quantum and classical pieces of the amplitude, plus some constraints, namely all these super classical terms that we were dealing with are just redundancies that appear as higher orders in the expansion of the exponential. Um, so let them now, uh, once we have retrieved the small delta uh, appropriately, we can simply neglect the iconal remainder and deal with the amplitude in this resum form and perform essentially the inverse Fourier transform, since after all, we are interested in the momentum transfer BQ. In this Fourier transform, since this is a large iconal phase, uh, the main contributions will arise from the saddle point in, uh, in the integral over B, and, and this condition therefore identifies for us uh, the classical momentum transfer. And let me stress that while we had started from a, a perturbative momentum transfer, small Q, which was um, uh, which was associated to exchange of uh, a few gravitons, for instance, at one loop level, one half, for instance, at exchange of two gravitons. In this case, we have exponentiated, so we are effectively exchanging an infinite number of, of soft gravitons, as is expected in the classical interpretation that we have of gravitational interactions. And uh, after retrieving Q, it's just a simple matter of trigonometry to, to finally go to the scattering up. Now, before moving to the results, there is a, one more subtlety that they have to mention, namely that the uh, real part, the, 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 the iconal uh, delta can acquire an imaginary part. And in fact, this is in particular true at uh, a two loop level where uh, the imaginary part of the uh, three PM or two loop iconal is non-trivial. And in fact, it is infrared divergent. And these infrared divergences are associated to, uh, to the presence of intermediate virtual gravitons, which, however, bear an intimate connection to the emission of real soft gravitons. In, in that, according to Weinberg theorem, uh, these infrared divergences are expected to cancel in any physical observable between these two, uh, between these two effects. On the other hand, 
the, the real part of delta two is finite, and uh, uh, and and uh, the, so the more precisely the prescription that we are going to adopt in order to calculate the momentum transfer will be to take the derivative of the real part of the econom. Very good. So let me now move to, uh, to uh, our theory of interest for, for this talk, which is an equivalent supergravity. And uh, so we will be interested in evaluating the uh, scattering of two massive objects in this near forward limit we are talking about. And uh, luckily for us, the amplitude associated to this process had already been studied in this outstanding paper by uh, Julio Paramartinez, Michel Ruff, and Mao Zeng. Um, which we borrowed essentially uh, up to uh, a small tweak, namely we turn to an amplitude which bears uh, an SU symmetric form, which adapted to other more general arguments that Gabriele uh, had, has been talking about uh, in his talk yesterday. And um, so this amplitude takes the form of a suitable sum over certain scalar integrals, for instance, this double box or non-planar double box integrals, which we then need to evaluate in the near forward limit as, uh, as, uh, as we already discussed. And uh, uh, there is a systematic tool in order to understand uh, the, uh, the limit in which certain parameters uh, uh, obtain some asymptotic, uh, attain some asymptotic behavior in Feynman integrals, which is the method of region. In this case, in particular, here I'm considering the uh, double box uh, integral. Um, uh, where, where the loop moment are called at one and at two, and uh, in in, uh, in the limit of small or small q, this limit of uh, this near forward limit, we can essentially identify two relevant regions. Uh, the first one is the so-called hard region, where the momenta scale like uh, essentially like the masses or like q to the zero. So they uh, this uh, this integral can be simply expanded in power series in q. And will give rise to contribution of the scale like q squared to the zero, q squared to the first power, and so on, which, however, translate in Fourier transform to purely local contributions, and therefore, uh, which are therefore irrelevant for the long range behavior of the iconal. On the other hand, the relevant region that we need to consider in order to uh, correctly reconstruct the iconal is the soft region, which is instead characterized by the scale scaling limit which in which q goes to zero and the momenta also scale like q. And indeed, performing this scaling in the, in the integral uh, and then performing the integrals does retrieve uh, these uh, precisely these super classical and classical pieces I've been uh, describing in the previous uh, more general, let's say, slide. On the other hand, uh, if one additionally considers the small velocity limit, which we did not consider so far in this setup, one can further consider um, an additional splitting of this, of this region into, uh, into two building blocks. One is the so-called potential region, which uh, is characterized by a, a scaling which is not manifestly Lorentz invariant. In particular, the um, time components of the integrated momenta are additionally suppressed by a power of the velocity, uh, with respect to uh, the spatial ones. And this means that these uh, exchange, the, the, the exchange described by this region are mediated by off-shell uh, gravitons and therefore are uh, supposed to be associated to conservative contributions in, uh, uh, in and then they are therefore the contributions that have been included in the calculation of the Hamiltonian I started from uh, in, the, in the first slide by Bern and collaborators. Uh, there is also another type of contribution instead where these gravitons are indeed on shell, which we can uh, therefore associate to the exchange and uh, the, the emission and the reabsorption of true on shell gravitons, which are indeed true radiation and which is emitted and reabsorbed by the system. And, uh, and as we will see, these are, are the ones that will be responsible for all the novelties in, in the result. Now, um, as Banau has already been mentioned in a number of talks before mine, including uh, Michael's and uh, Julio's talks, uh, there, there is a, a, a very useful tool that has been put forward in this paper I keep referring to by uh, Julio, Michel, and Mao, and which is uh, a technique based on uh, IDP reduction adapted to the problem of calculating soft integrals. Uh, in this method, the idea is to expand all these integrals that we have encountered in the soft region in a suitable basis of master integrals, uh, 
which can then be related to one another uh, by identifying a suitable differential equation, which are conveniently put in, the, uh, in this pure uh, form in, um, as, as was pointed out by Hen. And then, um, and then the idea is to evaluate boundary condition for small velocity. Now, at this point, there is a way to select this potential region I was talking about in the previous slide uh, by evaluating this static limit in the potential region, which eventually selected the potential, uh, the potential sector for all the integrals and for the whole amplitude in the result. But one can more generally evaluate the static limit uh, without any further uh, region expansion, so including all contributions that arise in the soft region. And this is what, uh, this is what we did. So unfortunately, I cannot go uh, through to the two-loop calculation here for you, but let me just give you a flavor of uh, uh, some techniques that we adopted that we employed in order to perform this evaluation of boundary conditions by looking at the simpler uh, one-loop example of the box diagram. So um, at one loop, this uh, the contribution, the, the dependence on the velocity, which is here encoded in this parameter y, appears in an integral of this type, which is in fact an elementary integral that can be performed straightforwardly. But let us pretend that we don't know how to do that, and let us try to evaluate its boundary condition for small velocity, namely for y going to one. So in this in this case, this quadratic form that appears in the exponent uh, acquires a zero mode, this direction q. Um, which falls in the in the first quadrant in this T3, T4 plane, which is precisely uh, the integration region. And, uh, and the idea is to consider a coordinate adapted to these, uh, to these zero modes, in, in practice to diagonalize this quadratic form in the static limit, and, uh, and uh, keeping the first correction for small velocity along this zero mode coordinate B along, along the direction Q. And as you can see, in this, uh, these integrations reduced to uh, Gaussian integrals, and one of them gives us precisely this singular behavior, uh, one over tau for, for small tau, and also um, give the right imaginary part. Uh, on the other hand, uh, for the for the cross box diagram, a different uh, a different zero mode appears, which is uh, placed in this direction, which does not lie in the integration region. And performing a similar discussion of the of the uh, these adapted coordinates leads to integrals that are uh, well behaved in the small velocity limit and lead to a finite and real also in fact uh, boundary condition. So again, this is just a toy a toy version of the calculation of two loops, but I think it was nice to present it in order to just give a flavor of of the two loop one. Okay, now let me move to the results and to the discussion. So uh, the first main result is that. After working out all these uh, integrals and putting everything back together, the exponentiation works as expected. And this is, for instance, the real part of the econo, which, as promised, is in fact IR finite. Uh, the 3 p.m. scattering angle is, is given here, it's been obtained from the real part as I described uh, before. And uh, we find essentially two sets of terms one where the terms that had already been uh, found in the paper by uh, Julio, Michel, and Mao. And it also appear in the potential region, while these other here in blue are the new ones. So in order to illustrate them, let me uh, consider separately the high energy and the, and the, and the low energy uh, regime. In the high energy limit, we see here on the second line, the, the first term appearing here is the one responsible for the famous log that I've been uh, advertising in the first slide, and this famous log that appears in the potential region. But luckily, these new terms that arise from the, the soft region are responsible for its cancellation. And therefore, eventually, this logarithmic behavior disappears in the high energy uh, regime. On the other hand, the first line is the one possessing the right scaling, uh, essentially proportional to SQ. And in fact, the two types of contribution coming from the potential and the radiation region eventually conspire to give the precise uh, the precise prefactor of four thirds that appears in the result by Amati, Chafaroni, and Veneziano, which is, uh, which is universal for massless scattering. You have five uh, minutes. The other, yep, I'm almost done. Uh, so on the other hand, it's in the static limit, one sees that the uh, potential contribution uh, possess a post-Newtonian scaling, which grows as uh, integer uh, uh, integer order, so it means that it's proportional to powers of v squared, integer powers of v squared, 
uh, while the new contributions are uh, associated to half odd uh, post Newtonian contributions, which are instead uh, contributions that scale like odd powers of the velocity and therefore are associated to dissipative effects due to their uh, non time reversal invariance and therefore nicely dovetailed with our interpretation as radiation reaction terms. Let me conclude by uh, mentioning also a uh, slightly newer observation that we have, namely, um, there, is a, uh, there is a way to uh, exploit the fact that the imaginary part of delta 2 is related to soft branch strahlung, uh, and this is the following. Uh, so one can notice that this imaginary part, so the, the coefficient of the pole in the imaginary part of delta 2, is in fact precisely equal up to a, a factor of minus 1 over pi, to the radiation reaction contributions that appear in the um, in the real part of delta two, and therefore are responsible for the radiation reaction parts of the scattering angle. So this, in principle, allows one to bypass the calculation of delta two if one can extract the imaginary of delta two, for instance, from a unitarity cut. So to reiterate, uh, we have been discussing uh, a possibility to evaluate this type of two-loop diagrams in the full soft region in the near forward limit. And we have used them to check the iconal exponentiation for n equal eight supergravity and to derive the deflection angle from the real part of the iconal. We have retrieved a smooth high energy regime for massive scattering, which agrees with the universal, the universal massless result. And on the other hand, the new terms exhibit radiation reaction effects that scale as uh, half odd post-Newtonian uh, contributions. And for the model, latter effects can be captured by looking at the, the infrared divergent part of the imaginary part of delta two. So I think at this point it should be very it would be very nice to understand not only this type of radiation that is emitted and reabsorbed by the system, but in fact also real radiation through bona fide, let's say, soft branch strahlung, which could be, for instance, attempted by promoting the iconal to an operator. And also to compare with the similar uh, but slightly, uh, let's say, complementary results presented also by uh, Julio yesterday that have to do with this technique uh, proposed by um, Kosower, maybe and O'Connell in the direct evaluation of these averages, and uh, and also with other methods such as, for instance, uh, the effective field theory methods, both in the effective field uh, version and also in the technique of Born subtraction. So with that, I, I will stop. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's thank Carlo again for his talk. And since we have a 10 minute break later, we have formally finished, but if you want to ask any questions, please go ahead and raise your hands or just feel free to unmute yourself. <laughs>